This is the Chasing Dory underwater drone. They say it's the smallest and most affordable underwater drone on the market. So I'm gonna take it out on this lake and give it a spin. This tiny high-tech submarine comes to us from the Chasing Company, which specializes in underwater drone technology. The Chasing Dory drone weighs four pounds or 1.1 kilograms and is about the size of a football. It has a maximum depth of 49 feet and uses five thrusters around its body to propel it through the water. There are two thrusters in the back for forward and reverse, two vertical thrusters up front, and one more vertical thruster in the back center. The thrusters help provide stability and are reversible to help the drone descend or come back to the surface. The drone has two speeds high and low for different water conditions and has a distance, depth, and water temperature sensor, although I never saw the distance meter change during my adventures. Dory connects via GPS Wi-Fi to a Wi-Fi buoy that floats on the surface of the water and is tethered to the drone by a 49-foot long cable. This gives the drone a strong connection, but also is a safety feature because the drone can easily get away from you and sink to the bottom of the sea. Once you've connected the Wi-Fi buoy to the drone, it lights up, plays a little pirate tune, and begins to broadcast the drone's GPS Wi-Fi signal. You connect your phone or tablet to the Wi-Fi signal, and then open the Chasing Dory app and sign in. The app works like most flying drone applications, allowing you to view the POV of the drone's 1080p 30 frames per second camera over a 720p live stream to your device. The app controls are pretty simple. The left joystick moves the drone left and right and points the nose up and down. The right joystick moves the drone forward and backward. In tandem, you can move the drone forward while controlling its angle by pointing the nose up or down. This did take me some practice to get the hang of, and you can customize these controls in the app settings however you like. There is also a depth lock setting, which will keep the drone at a certain depth of your choosing, as well as an angle lock setting, which will lock the nose in an up or down angle to a maximum of 45 degrees. This helps to get the drone out of a jam if it gets stuck in the weeds, or the thruster blades suck up tiny rocks and debris from the bottom of the lake, which happened to me many times. The drone would take off and then just dive to the bottom and get stuck. Later on, I found that chasing includes a small metal pick device for dislodging tiny rocks from the thruster blades. What was happening at first was we were just kind of going down and diving, and then it would hit the bottom of the ground, and these blades are sucking water through them. So it's sucking rocks and pebbles and seaweed through them, and then it would seize the blades inside, and then you lose complete control of this thing. So I've done this about 10 times. Once I got used to holding the left stick up, and then making sure it has forward motion so that it's going up, I was able to get it to kind of go and porpoise and come up and almost like a whale, like coming up for air and then going back down and diving. That said, it's probably a lot better to drive in deeper water and clearer water. Okay, so we're out here in South Lake Tahoe. We're gonna drop this drone into the deep water and see how it does. Okay, throw her overboard. The drone's camera looks really good underwater. You can shoot video in 1080p 30 frames per second or take still photos which are saved inside the drone's memory and share them online directly from the app. There are two parts to the app. One is the drone's device control and the other is for producing and sharing media. The drone is equipped with two 250 lumen LED lights that you can turn on and off with the app and help to illuminate the water for the drone's 1080p lens, which is optimized for low light with a color temperature of 4000K to 5000K. The video quality of the MP4 files look great in my opinion, and I was able to capture a lot of wildlife after much trial and error. It is worth mentioning that on one occasion, the lens of the drone did become foggy and impaired my camera view.
Battery life is really good on the drone. I got about an hour out of each use and it could take up to two hours for the drone to fully charge the 4,800 milliamp hour battery. To charge it, you simply plug the drone into a power outlet using the special adapter. When the light turns green, you're good to go. Clear water always made for better video footage and the depth helped the drone stay out of the gravel at the bottom of the lake. Overall, I really enjoyed playing with the Chasing Dory drone. It made me feel like Jacques Cousteau and a treasure hunting pirate all at the same time. Ahoy matey, where's me buried treasure? Arr. Lucky for me, I was able to spot some tadpoles, follow a frog, and the highlight of my underwater adventures when I followed a large rainbow trout in South Lake Tahoe for a few seconds. I did find myself removing and clearing rocks from the thruster blades quite often, which was a nuisance, so I highly recommend keeping the drone off the bottom of lakes or rivers. If you're looking for a different type of drone experience or really just a cool underwater adventure, I would recommend the Chasing Dory underwater drone. It is a very cool piece of technology with a bunch of bells and whistles to make for a fun and shareable experience. It provided me with some views of my surroundings that I had never explored before and gave my kids a thrill with what we were able to see under the sea.